All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Finance Opinion, where I'm on a mission to find the best moonshot altcoins that the cryptoverse has to offer. And in today's episode, we're going to be reviewing yet another metaverse project because those seem to be a lion's share of a lot of those altcoin projects that go under the radar, which are some of my favorites to take a look at because you never know what gold you're going to find under that rug. That said, after taking a look at the project we're going to be looking at today, the Paradox Metaverse, I had a little bit of a internal battle within myself. And I decided to preface this video with the fact that there are 20,000 cryptocurrencies to actively pick from. And when it comes to 20,000, there's bound to be ultimately Unlimited choice basically for you to pick where you want to invest your money or whether or not you are interested in a project and you want to purchase an NFT or a token. And really, I have to draw attention to the fact that at a certain time, we're going to start to see patterns repeat. And as we know, they're all utilizing this play to earn model because that's the main incentive to bring people from a triple A game over to the cryptoverse. I mean, honestly, think about it. Call of Duty already exists. People already have WoW, they have Space Games, Star Citizen. Why would they want to change over to a game that barely even started development? Well, it's because of the premise of something new and something that's for them. And that's usually the fact that the NFTs and the entire play to earn model bring more to the gamer than would otherwise be available in the traditional AAA game or period, mobile game, any game, right? If you're getting more out of it, perhaps you can even make money while you play the game or you own the assets yourself, that's a huge incentive to play this game. Now, I know this was a long tangent to go off of before I jump into the project, but we have to remember that there are a lot of choices out there. And I think you can kind of tell where my initial thoughts on this project are going is the fact that what separates this from a lot of the other projects isn't much at all. To be honest, there's plenty of projects out there that have a claim just as this, a triple A game where you have a free to roam metaverse where you can jump in cars and have that GTA like experience. Well, that's just about every third triple A game in the metaverse that we've been seeing lately. And to be honest, they're not all gonna make it. I think we can, we, we know that. Even when you look at the traditional gaming industry, which has plenty of room for people to constantly download games, to maintain viability through revenue, profit, and actually do a beautiful job of maintaining your player base and developing a gaming studio from there is no easy task. And to say it is, this probably means you don't know anything about the gaming industry. That said, I think we all know that the Cryptoverse has a very easy, easy, barrier to entry when it comes to developing a platform. At the end of the day, it really is more of a venture capital platform than anything. You know, the Cryptoverse allows people to raise money for projects they want to make. It just so happens to be one of the easiest ones to get into right now is the Metaverse. And that kind of leads me into the Paradox Metaverse. Now, I don't want to give this project too much of a hard time because Yes, they actually do have some results that they're putting forward. They, they have a video of what looks like in-game assets working. They have characters walking around driving cars in a playable free to roam world, which is a huge step in the right direction. I think there's a lot of projects out there that haven't even gotten that far and are touting millions of dollars and continual fan base that they keep pouring people money into the project and nothing's come out of it. So it should be exciting to see what they can actually do, giving people a chance to start from the ground up because traditionally getting into the gaming industry might have been a lot more difficult. Now, the Paradox Metaverse, however, it just doesn't seem as though the group behind it or what it is they're trying to develop, one, is that unique, or two, whether or not the team actually has the experience that you would want from a massive, massive gaming studio into the future. Again, they seem to actually be developing something. So we do have game footage inside the game and we do see their Twitter feed and their following actually having constant posts of showing updates and things going on. Their NFTs have developed and they're actually just had their pre-sale launch for their para token, which hopefully should be coming out onto centralized exchanges soon. Looks like they're partnered with Hubi. Well, that is all well good and said because that's great stuff to see. But at the end of the day, is this going to continue to be a game that people want to play and put more money into? Because at the end of the day, making a game is for revenue. Now, whether or not you think you can make a play to earn game or even a free to play game and make no money, you're out to lunch because it can only fund itself for so long. And, and as we know, the NFT sales are usually the pre-sale to basically fund the project. Now, 
Paradox Metaverse does claim that the founder actually has provided enough funds to maintain building the game and starting the studio from scratch without having to get any of those NFT pre-sales before they started. And that so is the case, but making NFTs and making that pre-sale anyway, they usually cost a little bit of money. So that's nothing really that new. That said, it is nice to see someone coming into the game with a little bit of their own skin in the game and developing stuff before they start asking people for money. So I'll have to give them that. But where I wanna take this a little bit is really looking at what it is they actually have to offer that's different and some of the claims they're making. They seem to be pretty decently you know, versed in what marketing is and are doubling down on the marketing aspect of it. And as we know, and I've said it many times before, you don't actually have to have a decent product or a product at all for marketing to kill and for you to make a bunch of money in the crypto space. Let's take a look and see if Paradox Metaverse actually has anything to offer. All right, to continue this review, I'm gonna start on over at the website where, yep, they have all the pieces that they look like they need to. It's a well to put together landing page that actually has all the tick boxes marked off that, you know, here's a few pieces of information, here's the marketing, here's our little roadmap, and as you can see, they actually do have their Metaverse game launch looking to come up here very shortly, so that should be interesting. As I said in my monologue, they actually have already presented their pre-sale for their para. That was available only to NFT holders, which was an incentive to purchase some NFTs earlier on, and we should be looking to see that centralized exchange listing coming down the road. They have mentioned some partnerships, as I believe I mentioned in my one of my many takes on the intro, that Hubi would be one of the centralized exchanges that they would actually be launching on. And here is a quick taste of what the gaming style is going to be like. You know, you can obviously see it's got a CryptoPunks little visual to it. And I would have shown some in-game footage before. But, you know, we're going down the kind of ape theme and we're getting, you know, we're, we're really catering to a group of people who are already in the Cryptoverse. So there is a part of that that I can understand, again, marketing-wise works. Masses? I don't know. Like, we have to wait and find out if that's going to be the fact. The team, we're gonna dive into a little bit more here in a minute, but they actually do seem to have a team. They have some screenshots of them actually at their studios, which have this wall behind them. And uh, you know, that's good to see. This is the first place where we were introduced to the marketing gimmick that, you know, again, a lot of the, this is what they all have, they have to, but it starts to become a theme within this project that I noticed quite a bit, is that these are some of the brands that our team members worked with throughout their career. So we're not working with them, right? See how that's a misguided, like, statement where you would be implied that, oh, they're working with Sony and Vogue and Warner Brothers, and Star Wars. Somehow they're connecting the dots that someone has worked with them. Now they don't even say in what capacity. So yes, someone could have worked at the theme park at Star Wars and Disney, and this probably would qualify as this stamp. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. The second one comes up from the, the notion of the Unreal Engine, which they put throughout their white paper, which we'll take a look at in a second, and mention it several times that they're a triple A game using the Unreal Engine. Not the only one, and it definitely doesn't look triple A game-ish, right? They're, they're working on it and doesn't mean they couldn't get there eventually, but those claims we're just starting to see way too often to take them with too much validity unless we see the visuals that represent it. I just did a video on uh, Project Quantum, which has the visuals that look a lot more like a triple A game, like Apex Legends or Call of Duty. This is closer to GTA, but not even quite necessarily to that level. Will they develop to there? Quite possibly. But those claims of AAA games, unless you're seeing it right off the bat, you just have to take it with a grain of salt. So this moves me straight into the claims that they are making that, you know, what, what is this project looking to offer and why are you getting involved before they have their token launch and all they have is their NFTs. We're, we're making a game for you to play and where do you usually go to find out what's gonna be involved in that is the white paper. Something I was a little bit disappointed about was the fact that it's really not filled with much other than, you know, just paragraphs of, relatively generic stuff. It's like, here's what the game's gonna be about, here's what's going on, here's our roadmap, a little bit more detailed than one's on the website, but if we take a look at the things to come up, we obviously see the pre-sale, but the last item here that's available is that Q3 of 2022 is the game launch. Our aim and our main goal is to get the game launched by this date. Much more will be happening in addition to what has been detailed to enhance the gaming experience for each and every user. Okay, so they're gonna launch the game, but with no real, what, what is this game that we're getting into? I mean, again, we've seen a little bit of in-game footage, but what are we getting into? And what's the plan after here? What, like, how do you continue to make revenue? What is your plan here? So I don't like it when they don't have too much past a certain point, although they do have a roadmap they've been ticking off. But when we come back through, you know, we, we can see that the team actually is here. Uh, they're in a group shot, which I like because that shows that there might be a team together. They're, you know, standing against the backdrop, which obviously they could put that anywhere, but 
it shows some legitimacy, right? It was, we're looking for red flags that this is a scam, right? But it doesn't seem to be terribly that much, but we're gonna talk more about the team here in a second. But really going back to the white paper and talking about each one of these, it's, it's really just paragraphs of standard stuff. And when you look at what there is they're talking about with the market research, it's the normal stuff. The gaming industry is gonna get big, right? And then we have this relatively generic, this is their statistic page with not many statistics, you know, and it's not even great numbers, but they go on to talk about how there will be, you know, up to a trillion dollars by 2030. I mean, that should be interesting to see, but yeah, there it, it's just not really fleshed out. Then we've got a whole bunch of the actual characters that are rented out, uh, pointed out. And then we come to some of the interesting parts you might be interested in getting involved with Para or perhaps investing in this project. And then we look at the renting section. Well, really not much here, details coming. Staking, details coming. So, you know, Para token, what's involved, details coming. Those were some of the main key points that you might go to and I usually do in, in projects when I straight look at them and I'm like, oh, I don't really care about the game. It's like, what are you offering me as an investor and do you know what you're talking about? They just don't have any details, they don't have any information. So it's like, you've incentivized me to get into the NFT to purchase the token to do what? Well, let's go to the website to find out. Okay. At the very top, there is a tab named benefits, and this is where they talk about why you would wanna purchase into this stuff. So basically, NFTs will get airdrops, and they have these number of uh, things you can do. And it, it summarizes it here a little bit easier for you. And I'm gonna punch in for the viewers. Uh, it's the, the coin of the economy, it will run on it, okay? A lot of them say this, and they're gonna be swapping them with USDT, so they'll have those pairs wherever they're listed. Only NFTs, uh, NFT holders will be able to purchase the Paracoin on presale. So that just happened, July 22nd, I believe. Earn Paracoin when completing in-game missions. So they're gonna have some sort of missions. This is really the only time they mention that. They do mention it once in the white paper, but they don't say what kind of games, what are we playing. Earn Paracoin by staking your NFTs. So they will have a staking mechanism. Again, not explained how that staking mechanism will work or what the, the actual logistics will be. Random airdrops of Paracoin and NFT to NFT holders. So you will get Paracoin for holding your NFT, not sure how much, how much, why, when, often, and portion of transaction fees will be distributed to para coin stakers. So again, kind of a, a model that we've seen. It seems like it's being copied from a lot of other projects and they're all just copying from each other, obviously taking the best pieces that can. So they're, they're doing the right thing in the sense that they're copying some of the more popular options, but again, without any actual logistical follow through that shows us that that's gonna happen, okay? Doesn't mean it's not going to. And as I said earlier, I'm gonna give everyone the benefit of the doubt in the fact that they've actually got some game being developed, right? That's what's happening. So I've, you can see the footage of it. Now, whether or not it's a 3G model played and there's actually someone playing, that's to be said, but it, it actually, you know, it, it's following those. We just wanna see some more follow through on that. So it'd be nice to see the, fact, the, the white paper and the actual information related to what I benefit from, from being an NFT staker, a pair of coin holder, what I'm actually getting. Like I, staking, sure, saying that word is a buzzword, right? So this is, these are those marketing terms I was talking about. Staking, you know, renting, boom, you, distribution of token, of revenue, okay. What form, how much, when, why, you know, how long do I have to hold, locking period, all those sort of things, very important. And a lot of crypto projects already have that. Now, I don't know if I remember mentioning it in this monologue before, but there's 20,000 cryptocurrencies. Did I mention that? There's 20,000 to pick from. So what separates this from any other one and why is this the one that's gonna moonshot? That's something you gotta ask yourself. So taking us down the rabbit hole a little bit further, let's talk about the team. Now, I didn't do a huge in-depth on every one of those team members listed in the white paper. I didn't feel like I needed to. This is the main gist of what I feel like everyone should understand. So down here, there's a quick link to the actual studio that is making Paradox Metaverse, Paradox Studio. And we're taken to this landing page when we click on it. And from here, it's very relatively simplistic, but game design, you know, some fluff, right? We've got some technical word fluff. Game design isn't just technological craft, it's 21st century way of thinking and leading. And honestly, I believe that too. But let's see the follow through on what that is that, that is, is making it so that they can speak to that talking about a virtual showroom for a car uh, a rental company, uh, talking about how Onyx Rentals is one of the largest rental businesses in the UK, uh, produce, uh, providing uh, high-end rentals, Lamborghinis of that such, and, and that they will be also providing a Web3 payment platform where you can accept crypto, one of the first services in the world to do this. And if we actually take ourselves to that website, well, cool, we're, we're taken to a website and they do host a number of high-end vehicles, and we can see this green Lamborghini shown multiple times, and um, yeah, you know, it looks like it's a legit company, um, and we can take a look at what happens when we click rent, and 
To my impression, this is the only version of the showroom I could see that they speak of that Paradox Studios has helped develop. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't spin, I don't have any controls. And each one of the cars you click on, it's just basically that. It's like a Photoshopped version of the car in this digital studio. So that doesn't really speak too much, but let's, let's remember that this company is one that they say they're working with. Here's the second company that Paradox Studios is working with, Amio Talio University. And I was like, what is this? Interesting, I don't really know what this is. Curious, okay, so it's a studio helped create and teach students about blockchain technology. Cool, let's check that out. But I mean, this is, I'm just letting you know, I was in marketing for a while, this is your standard marketing landing page. Unlock your potential, listen to me and I will make you rich. Interesting, doesn't sound like a university as much as it does one of those course places where you go and you purchase a course from a guru and you become a way super rich because now they've taught you everything they know. Wow, here we go, here's, here's the man himself, Emilio uh, Amio Talio. Wow, that's a grand green Lamborghini. So you also have a green Lamborghini? And then another company that Paradox Studios is working with has a green Lamborghini too? What are the chances of that? And you can see that they actually do have a membership platform that you can get into involved here. I'm not gonna speak to whether this works or not. Maybe it does, you know, the guy out there is selling services, I don't know much about it, but there isn't much here to go off of why you would get involved with it. But what you can see is when you actually go to check out some of the quick links or when you check him out is, we've, we've got our, you know, traditional marketing style, you know, Instagram here where it's like, hey, cool, I got Lamborghinis, I got cars, I got fast, I got money, I got cash, 48,000 followers. So this guy actually does have a following and it looks like is making an actual course. But what again, I would postulate is the fact that he owns both the companies, Onyx and that one himself. And perhaps one of them, maybe the Onyx one is actually very successful and has actually made him quite a decent amount of money. Um, if we, if we are taken back to here and we go to our TikTok, not a whole hell of a lot of videos, but we can see, again, showing off the Lamborghini, showing off the cars, um, clearly has some form of money. It's quite often this stuff is rented and all that jazz, but you know, showing off the money. So we see that sort of usual marketing scheme that goes behind with a lot of those characters. But again, this is, seems to be the person who owns it. And there we can, we can see our Paradox Meta, uh, Metaverse, uh, character, one of our apes right there in the center. So this seems to be our main man. And actually we do confirm that by heading back over to our website, heading over to the homepage, scrolling on down. I'm doing this live for you guys because I feel like we can all see where I'm going with this. There's our man right there. So I actually went about this the backwards way and found out that, oh, so he's clearly the same guy who's uh, detailing all his information about this is, you know, this is the company that's making all these other stuff. Now, a lot of companies will actually do that. They will refer to their own internal umbrella company or the company that they're working for and all these projects they developed for themselves. And it's just a marketing tactic. Of course, it works to help get investors involved and to show some form of credibility. Now we did go and I'll let you make your own decisions about the credibility of what was related to it. But one thing I do wanna point out is none of those were video game related, nor blockchain related, nor finance related, nor metaverse related. None of those related. One's a car rental service, the other one is a guru mentorship pro program, okay? What I will say to give Amio Talio his due, the guy knows something about making money, at least it looks like that from the outside. A lot of these gurus, again, quite often they're fake, so it's hard to tell, but clearly there is some part of him that is an entrepreneur, and I believe he does call himself a serial entrepreneur. And this would maybe be the fact that, this, this would maybe be the part where I wanna give him the credence of the potential to follow through on this. This also has a double edge where it could just be a complete another money-making scheme or way for him to pull in a bunch of money. But if he is an entrepreneur and successful at making businesses because he knows how to make businesses, then that could be a lean to, here's just a man with another project idea seeing an opportunity and going forward with it. Capitalism at its best. And you may have to give him that benefit. I think that that is due in the course until we see they're a falter or we see that actually, you know, they can't follow through on some of their promises, which probably puts this in that category where I can imagine you, you already know where I'm gonna go with this is that this is probably a sit and watch what they can do token for me. 
just to see if I'm gonna give this person the benefit of the doubt that they're gonna follow through again with very little experience in the past. As I mentioned, I didn't go through the entire list. I did click on a few of them. Some of the LinkedIn experience was definitely lacking on a few of the easily clickable items inside the white list, uh, white paper. Go check it out for yourself if you are interested. But for me, it was basically, I'm looking at the head, I'm looking at him being a serial entrepreneur. He clearly works with another one of his uh, partners in the Onyx rental. That's another one of the head members. And you know, it's, there's some, there's some back and forth there on me as far as whether or not this person can fall off a gaming studio. All right, so to continue down our road of, you know, is this a legitimate project? Is this something we would wanna invest in? We are taking a look at the Twitter, looking at sort of the social proof behind the company. And we do have 23,000 followers. So decent number. There's definitely some people who know about it. It's not too small. So we have to give it a little bit of a, okay, there's some eyeballs on it. And they do post regularly. This most recent one here was related to their pre-sale. Uh, they are doing another giveaway. And if you took a look at those TikToks and those Instagram posts, there was a lot of giveaways in there. So they clearly know the giveaway scene. They're, they're very well versed in that sort of aspect of it. And as we can see, um, you know, they've got continual posts. Engagement is a little small for a following of that size but it's still some engagement. You know, we're seeing a range of like 60 likes per thingo and, and getting some retweets and some, some you know, actual responses, not a crazy amount of it. Now, if we actually do take a look from here, this is where I found their medium. They don't have it listed on their webpage anywhere, but they're basically talking more about it if we continue through to the medium article here. We can see they did it join forces with a number of exchanges and they are talking about uh, actually having that listed here soon, that para token that we've been talking about. And I wanted to click on this. The Who Be one is, um, is, is an interesting one because it's a big name that obviously we all know, but I do love this verbiage in here and it goes back to it. As part of the Who Be Exchange initiative to target and bring business visionaries, magnates, and titans of industries, the team decided to fly out crypto investor Amio Talio, the founder of one of the leading world play to earn gaming and blockchain development company, Paradox Studios, to their Hubi Financial HQs. Uh, yeah, definitely fluffed up. All these articles always all, anytime you see those pre listing articles on any medium or any like yahoo.com or Forbes or any of these things, they're all paid for. They're fake. They're paid for. Someone's writing them, making them very fluffy and nice. But that one was just like super, super fluffed out. I give props to him. The man's doing it. He's hitting it down. Here's the other thing is that there's actually pictures of him at these places talking about making these connections. So this is going back to the actual follow through. There is follow through. Again, we got to give a person a benefit of a doubt. So I'm not going to knock them for that. And I do appreciate that they are continuing to put out posts. We do see new screenshots of the characters that's constantly being put out. The pre-sale, like I said, it was also listed here, 40 hours until pre-sale ends. Uh, not a huge amount of responses here. However, still did have somewhat of a following and people were looking at it. Now, to not make this video too terribly long, I think it's pretty straightforward. My opinion on the entire situation here is that I see a serial entrepreneur who's looking to jump into the industry, obviously make some money and start another business. Whether he can actually follow through is the question that's biggest for me. Now, I like giving people the benefit of the doubt. And I like things thinking of a cup as half full and that they can actually accomplish it because I would like to think someone would give me the same benefit of the doubt if I wanted to start a project that I didn't necessarily have the credence in. So I always go there. However, we do know scams are plenty in this industry and actually resulting in a finished gaming studio, which if you know anything about gaming studios, it's not necessarily an easy task. Unless you have a group of individuals who've been doing it for years and know what they're doing, it can be difficult. Now, I'm not saying you can't break into it. And again, getting a bit of money in the cryptoverse does change the entire world of that. It's kind of one of the beautiful things about the cryptoverse, that it opens up opportunities and doors to different people who didn't have those chances before. That said, Maybe it is one of those ones out of the 20,000 you look at that you, hey, see a little follow through before you pick up into it. You know, the NFTs and the actual tokens, is there gonna be any value missed out if you don't purchase now? Now that I can't speak to, and again, none of this is financial advice. Obviously it's just an opinion and some guy ranting at a YouTube uh, channel. I'm just putting it out there. That is just my thoughts on the entire process of it. However, if you did wait a little bit of period of time, would you really hate yourself? if you saw some results come out that were actually proving that there was a money-making model that was providing value and utility to its customer base and the users and everything was hunky-dory. I think you would reward yourself and pat yourself on the back and feel pretty good about it. Now, if you did miss some gains on there, you'd probably 
downvote this channel and shoot me, but hey, I'm just here trying to put out my opinion how I feel about it. Again, there's 20,000 cryptos out there. Picking that one moonshot when you have so many others to choose from, that's up to you and something I think you need to do, but it does go into the whole do your own research, check into what you think is valuable there. And if you do think anything differently, this is the perfect time to let me know. Leave a comment on what you think about the project, if you think I got this wrong, right? Like if I'm giving it too hard of a time, if you know Amio and you think he's the man, let me know. If you think he's got the follow through, then maybe that changes the view and we do a review later on once they've got some follow through. But up until this point, I'm gonna leave it in your hands to finish up your review and go deep dive into this project if you really think it is something you wanna hold into. For me personally, I've given you my opinions and at the end of the day, that's all this is. It's just an opinion, it's not financial advice. And I appreciate you guys for stopping by. If you found any value out of this or you appreciated me rambling at this uh, camera screen, maybe just some background noise, then you know what to do. Like, subscribe, does help the channel. I appreciate it. And again, leave that comment down below. I love talking with you guys. And this is where I'll leave you. I'll see you in the next video.